Hello, welcome to today's The Word in a Flash. I'm Freddie Wilson. Today's subject is the choices we make. I'm sure you heard the expression before that God made us all free will agents. That means God gave us a choice to come to him for comfort, peace, guidance, direction. But you have to make that choice on your own. You have to be willing to make that choice and understand that it is your choice. God is not going to make you come to him. You have a choice to go to the Lord. All too often, we make choices based on our needs to be accepted by our loved ones, the people in our communities, and the people in our workplaces. That's backwards. You need to do things that pleases the Lord, and everything else will fall into place. Proverbs 14 and 12 reads, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Too many men and women are more concerned about pleasing their mates than pleasing God. Instead of serving God, they focus more on keeping the peace in their homes. Matthew 6 and 1 reads, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. It's fine to uh, be willing to keep the peace in your home, but you should never sacrifice your relationship in God in order to do so. It's also uh, okay to make plans for your life and for your family, but you must take God's will into consideration whenever you make a plan because anything that you do that's contrary to what God wants you to do, you're subject to fail. You should consult God before you make any plans and before you take any steps towards your plan. I encourage you to pray about everything before you do it. Proverbs 19 and 21 reads, Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. You should always seek growth in your life. That includes your relationship with God, and in your relationship with your mate. We have to watch how we go about our daily lives, about who we're trying to please and what we're trying to please. Second Timothy 2 and 22 said to run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, seek righteous living, love, peace, and harmony with your community. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with a pure heart. One thing I encourage you to do is not settle for less than what God would have for you. Settling for less just means you're not being faithful, that you don't trust God that he will give you something better than what you think you deserve. Passages in Genesis tells us how easy it is for us to get out of faith. Never get out of faith. Always seek the Lord in what you're trying to do. Sometimes we become impatient and try to put our plans to action and without waiting for God. Let me tell you something. You can never outdo God. Your plan may be good, but God's plan, if you're in his will, is so much better than you can ever imagine. Don't put too much faith in your abilities, your skills, your money, or your station in life. Don't ever compromise with the devil. If you compromise with the devil, you will end up tricked. Psalms 27 tells us to wait on the Lord. Stay in faith. We must not act out of the flesh. The flesh has three characteristics. One, it settles. Two is limited to the physical. 
God's ability is supernatural, so it goes beyond the, the natural. Things done in the flesh are normally done in what's, what's called natural, normal, or, and it normally depends on numbers and ability to repeat. God doesn't operate that way. And three, the flesh settles for what's immediate. This normally would consider to be something that's below standard. But you can get to it right now. You don't have to wait. Hebrews 10 and 36 tells us to have patience. Romans 8 and 9 tells us, But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. So people learn how to wait. God would do things in his own time. This brings to mind something that I witnessed a long time ago before I ever got married. There was a young lady that lived in the community. I was active duty, but I was single. And this was a very beautiful young lady. She was married, had two kids. But there was a reputation for that family where the husband was known for beating this woman regularly. It was a sad situation, but most folks didn't want to get involved. So someone finally asked her, well, why do you stay with this man that he beats you the way he does? And you wouldn't believe her answer. Her answer was she stayed because they made a beautiful couple. What? This lady was more concerned about their appearances as looking as a beautiful couple than the damage she was causing to herself and her kids by staying in an abusive relationship. I'm not trying to tell, uh, give you any kind of marriage counseling or tell you who you ought to be with, but I am saying that we are often victim of our own choices. Again, my subject is the choices we make. You need to learn to make better choices. Oftentimes we make choices when God was telling us to do one thing, we did another. And then when they go bad, we want to blame God for what we did. God will give you the guidance you need. All you have to do is listen to him. You can make better choices if you trust God and listen to his small, still voice telling you what to do and how to live your life. And with that, be blessed.